So you want to be faster. I think many sensei will agree that this should not be your goal right now. But since you're probably going to keep looking, let me share with you three things that I think can drastically improve your speed. And at the same time, I think your sensei will approve. I'm going to break down how to move and how to attack in order to reduce your reaction time and be more explosive as you attack. Also, towards the end of the video, I'm going to give you a couple of things that you may want to do in order to start working on these elements at home and then you can take them into the dojo. That being said, everything that I'm going to be sharing today works works together so please stay to the end of the video and if you have any questions please let me know down in the comments below or you can pass by one of my live streams that I do on the weekend. There are two things that will make you faster in your kendo. One is physical ability and the second one is technique. Yes you can train your muscles to get faster and you can do this alongside to what we're doing today but I'm going to talk about how to make things more effective and the proper way. So let me get right into it. The first thing you should try to work on is reducing your reaction time, having the proper reaction and build momentum, build speed. In order to do that, my best advice is do not stop the motion. I don't mean that you should always be moving around your opponent and being jumpy and so on. What I mean is that when you're moving, you never want to sink flat or drop your weight down and just wait for your opponent to move. For example, it's very common to see people stepping into the opponent, try to get a reaction, but they just sink their way, they just stop hoping to get something, and then they start their motion from zero. You always want to have a forward intention. I think a good visualization I have about this is imagine a car spinning the wheels before it takes off. Ideally, you want the opponent reacting to you, but even if you're reacting, you don't want to start your motion from zero. If you have this forward intention, your mentality is towards your opponent and also your muscles are starting to engage towards your opponent rather than sinking you down and freezing. If you see strong kendoka, especially if you see some of the hachidan tournaments, you're gonna see that the kenshi put the pressure towards their opponent It's like they're falling into their opponents. They try to avoid having this backwards mentality. Normally this type of mentality gets you hit. So even when you're not moving, you want to have this mentality of moving forward rather than sinking and waiting for your opponent to do something. This is technically not making you faster, but it's preparing you to come forward, to be ready for any motion or any opening that the opponent may give you. And your opponent will definitely perceive you as you're faster because you're immediately making a response to whatever motion they're doing. Doing this will definitely help your timing more than your speed, but believe me, timing always beats speed. Just like me taking the time to ask you to please like this video if you're getting some value. The next thing you can do to improve your speed is understanding how to use your footwork, specifically the left foot. I made a video previously about Fumikiri and understanding how Fumikiri works, I think is a big tool in order to build up speed as you attack because you want to understand that the left leg doesn't just push initially to start the motion, it should push continuously all the way until it leaves the floor and right before it leaves the floor it wants to kick off to give you this impulse towards your opponent pretty much what you're doing here is you're creating momentum and then at the very end pushing off taking off to add speed to that momentum you're creating many people when you see them they drag the left leg this is what's happening they're not kicking off and the leg is dragging on the floor instead of pushing off. Quick little note, do not jump up. You want to leap forward, okay? So now we put together your approach and then your attack. These are crucial to have together in order to take the next step. Keep your hands to yourself. That's a funny way of saying it, but what I really mean is to hold your hands back to the very last second you can to throw the attack. You want to engage your arms as you already create a momentum, even after the Fumikiri or right along the Fumikiri, so that way you add speed to your sore more than what you created with your body. So I'm sorry that I haven't done the analysis yet. I will do it when I'm doing the editing of the video. But what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to show you how much the distance that the sword moves and the amount of frames that it does move in. So if we take a second to analyze this video, you can see how much the sword moves in this amount of frames. Now look how much more the sword moves in these amount of frames. So what I'm trying to do here is show you how much more the sword moves in less time. Most of the times when people are trying to look for speed, the first thing they do is they throw their hands. If you do this, you don't get the benefit of getting this explosivity at the end of the attack. So pretty much the sword will travel at one speed. But if you hold your sword back and the very last second you engage the arms, you're not only going to add the speed to the sword, you're also going to change the timing in which you're attacking. The main skill you need to perform this is to learn to relax your upper body as you move. 
So let me talk about some of the things we can do to improve these skills that I just talked about at home so you can take them into the dojo. To learn how to not cut the momentum, take some time, maybe in front of a mirror, and practice this. Take one small step and get ready for the next one. Learn how to start moving the right leg slightly without leaving the engagement of the left leg. Take some time to practice this. I like to do this, I like to practice it very short and then expand it. Try to understand how to move and then keep that feeling of pressuring forward. I cannot stress it enough. Practice small steps, very, very small steps and re-engaging immediately after you took the step. Once you take that step, avoid landing with all your weight on your right and disengaging the left leg. For the Fumikiri, you can do a couple of things. Try to do like a Fumikiri and Fumikomi step, very short and little by little expand it. Take some time to understand how to kick off the floor. Then with practice, you can make it longer and longer. This way you understand how to push off further and how to time up that Fumikomi and that kick with the Fumikiri. And you can also try this without the strike. So you can start also practicing relaxing your upper body. The second one is lunges. Lunges are things that are fantastic. And one thing that you want to do, you want to make sure that you engage the left leg continuously as you do the lunge. So you do the lunge, you make sure the left leg is engaged and then push up forward, mainly with your left leg. Obviously you're gonna work with both legs, but don't use only the right leg to pull you forward. Try to use both legs, focus on putting force from the left, kicking off the floor and landing on Kamai immediately. There's also this little rubber band exercise that you can do that I think is fantastic to understand what muscles are you engaging when you're doing this kick and the Fumikiri. For the hands, you need to learn how to move without engaging your arms. So the best thing you can do is move around, do some footwork exercises as you're keeping your kamae moving around and not tensing up your shoulders or your upper body. What I like to do as well is I like to try some fumikomi drills without using my arms. But I also have another exercise with rubber band that you can do in order to also learn what muscles you need to engage at the right moment. Very simple, you wrap your rubber band around your shinai, you put your foot inside of the rubber band on the other end and then push off with your left hand and then doing tenuchi at the end. Please build yourself up along all the skills that I mentioned. Don't try to do them all together. Make sure that you take your time to develop each of them because they build up on top of each other. And don't overwhelm yourself because then you're not gonna feel like you're getting any progress. Especially if you're trying to get faster, don't rush because then you're gonna create bad habits. And also take the time to ask your sensei because I want to make sure you don't develop bad habits. You will develop a faster and stronger kendo if you focus on the right things rather than just trying to hit quicker. I'm sure that now you are aware of these elements, you're gonna start seeing them more and more. So I challenge you to take some time to watch some Kendo videos and try to see if you spot this element. And you can let me know down in the comments if you do and where you find it. Now the first skill as we discussed, it's also part of learning how to build pressure against your opponent. So it's a skill that will later on transfer into semi. So if you would like to start learning more about how to make opportunities to strike, you may want to check out this video I made right here. Also, if you have any questions, please take a second to leave them down in the comments below, or you can pass by one of my live streams that I do on the weekends. Make sure that you're subscribed to this channel and also have your notifications on so you know when I go live or I post new videos. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and share it with somebody you want their kind to improve. Thank you very much for watching.